Welcome to the Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse for CTM live coverage of... Graduation, so they're kind of trying to get some kids to step up and replace some of that scoring. They're a defensive-minded team. They're not going to score a ton of points, but they're going to try and hold you to about 60 a game. Yeah, they. I was going to make that exact point. They don't score a ton of points, but they don't give up a lot of points either. They have a couple of guys scoring double digits. Their leading offensively is offensive guard. Uh, on offense is guard Max. Max Spanier is averaging a little over 16 points a game. You know, he's, he's really had a great start to the year, and they rely on him to be their scorer. And so when he gets going and they're playing good defense, they have a solid squad. And for the Coon Rapids Cardinals, uh, it's a team effort, and they are getting good depth scoring. Jackson Hetwer, one of their senior captains, is one of those guys at the top of the leaderboard. Jackson comes in uh, averaging about 10 and a half points a game. And I was talking to Coach Agor today, and, and Coach O said, we're finally about pretty much 100% healthy right now. So this comes, well, hopefully it stays that way, comes at a great time. But you know, the, the Cardinals and their win, they're averaging almost uh, 90 points a game. So when they play well and they play solid defense and their offense is on, they can light it up. Well, and they hope to keep that offense clicking and to keep Elk River's offense from exploding. The Cardinals and the Elks take the court next on CTN. Back at the field house, just about to tip it off between the Cardinals and the Elks. First time we've seen the boys' basketball team since their first week of the regular season. The first time we've seen our the third member of our crew in the new year. Down on the sidelines is Lexi Schweiner. Lexi? Thank you so much, guys, and so happy to be back on the broadcast and in this gymnasium right now. And Coon Rapids is so excited for tonight's game against Elk River. I talked to Coach O earlier today, and he said he really likes where his team is right now, five and three on the season. He mentioned that he does feel like in the locker room they should be six and two. They had that one overtime game that they just lost due to some injuries and some guys sitting out on the bench. But he told me he feels like this is the deepest his team has been in 11 years in a conference win tonight would be huge guys thank you Lexi and definitely a beatable three and five Elk River team on the other bench yeah I mean Elk River's going to want to they're really going to want to slow this pace down of the game and I think the biggest key for Coon Rapids and what coach O said to me is that we want to speed this game up we want to take them out of rhythm take them out of their game you know they're going to want to play a half court game but they're not going to try and let them play that half court game Coach O celebrating before every game and hopefully celebrating after the game. This one is 
underway with the Cardinals getting the opening possession, but the pass stolen away by Spanier on the run, lays it home with the left hand. Yeah, we talked about Spanier in the opening, and he's, uh, he's their leading scorer. And as he goes, so do the Elks. Freeman up top, left side. Young pops the three, it's good. Uh, Jackson Young is picking up where he left off, and he's a prolific scorer for the Cardinals, averaging over 18 points a game. Played every single minute in that uh, Cambridge Isani game. Up top, Vendrell gives it to Spanier. Now up top is Webster. Kicks it back out. Three pointer for Vandrell won't go. Rebound by Freeman. And the Cardinals quickly up court in transition. Kick to the corner, three-pointer Hetworth, won't fall. Good solid rebound by Jason Russ, and he traveled. Yeah, nice try, nice thought there, tried to move to the inside, but uh, just took one extra step, and the officials called, called caught him. When uh, I spoke with Ryan Cervati, head coach of the Elk River Elks, he said, you know, this is a, this is a team where we have to limit Coon Rapids to one shot down court. Spanier fadeaway won't fall. Freeman tips it, controlled by Russ. Freeman heads up court. Backs out. Breaking oh. against Cool. Nice dish down low, but Jordan can't finish. Oh, it's unfortunate because there's a beautiful assist to him, and he was right there and just uh, couldn't, couldn't get the bu bucket to go. Spanier hits the running left hander. Freeman inside Jordan, back door. Bucket is good for Jason Russ. Yeah, and again, just uh, nice passing. Nice pass from one big man to the other. Cardinals uh, lead 5 4. Joel Kungo. Kungo up top for Dom Webster. Down low, Vandrell spins inside and scores. Freeman in traffic at the top of the key. Kicks it out to Jackson Young. Working against Spanier. Tried to get it back to Freeman. Tip to Jordan. Kicks it out. A little pump fake by Russ. And now Young puts it on the floor. Gets into a little bit of trouble against Vandrell. High pass for Hetwer in the corner. Russ down low. Good move inside. Throws it up. It won't fall. Vandrell has the rebound. Oh, he took that step to the inside and created some space for himself. And unfortunately, we've seen a couple of misses from right in close tonight for the Cardinals. Kungu on the move. It goes off the rim. Rebound by Russ. Freeman long for Young. Kicks it back. Hatworth for three. It's good. Nothing but net for that young man. He's able to drop it. Eight. Six is the lead for the Cardinals. The first bucket for Hatworth here in First half. High post, Webster out to Spanier. Thought about the three steps inside. Doesn't like that look either. Needs some help. Gets it over to over to Kungu. Spanier in the corner. Tried to drop it down low and does get it to Vandrell. Tried to get it back to him, but taken away by Hetwer. Cardinals on the move. Freeman shoots for three. He hits it. Uh, Cardinals starting to heat up a little bit from beyond the arc. Back-to-back -back three pointers gives them that 11-6 lead. Three three pointers in the game from three different players. Four different players on the score sheet already for the Cardinals. Talk about depth of scoring. Four minutes in. Great defensive play by Russ. Hetworth leads the rush the other way. Takes Spanier right to the hole, won't go. But the follow is good for Jerry Freeman. Yeah, Freeman right there to follow the miss. And, and again, just good team basketball from Coon Rapids. You know, th what they want to do is move the ball. And that's something that they've done here early on. As, as you mentioned, Russ with a good defensive play on that end. And then the miss from Hetwer and the follow by Freeman gives him the bucket and the lead of seven. Elks called the timeout. Try and keep that lead from growing any larger if possible.
Coach O's got to like the start for his team, the tempo they've created. Well, and that was, you know, the biggest key for them is that we, we want to create this tempo. We want to make this a fast basketball game because that's not Elk River style. Elk River wants to play half court. They want to slow things down, and they want to play solid defense. And they did not get nope. it across the center uh, midcourt line in 10 seconds. And I'm sure that we're seeing, and teams are seeing much more full court defenses with the introduction of the shot clock oh, yeah. in high school basketball. Hatwork kicks it to the corner. Jordan for three. That one's a little bit short. Young there to clean it up on the back side. Yeah, again, just good defensive positioning for the Cardinals. And as you mentioned, Coach has to love that, the way they're playing, the way they've started this game. Kunku across. Into the corner. Webster for three. That rattles around and out. Foul away from the ball. Looks like it's going to be called against Hetworth. Yep. Yeah, this has been a pretty clean game up till now. Just the first foul of the, of the first half by either squad. Kungu gets it into Spain. Your right side up top. Webster all alone. Three-pointer is good. Yeah, again, just uh, leaving the, leaving Webster up the top of the key, and he made, a, he made him pay for that one. Big man drops it from up top. Freeman spinning his way to the left side, working against Kungu. Jordan up top, Russ for three. That one won't go. Rebound by Jordan, but foul is going to be called. Underneath, I think Vandrell going to be called. Yeah, I for think the you're hole. correct. Where his inbound pass skips away from Freeman. Recovered by Ross. Nice move down the left side, but comes up short. Webster has the rebound. Cool. We'll swing it across to Kungu into the front court for Webster. Spanier spins and knocks down a floater in the lane. A couple back to back buckets for the Elks. Cuts the lead to four. Young answers with a three-pointer at the other end. He has eight. Jordan got a hand on the pass. Young gets the steal. Drives, gets the bucket, and the foul. Will go to the line and try and convert a three-point play. Yeah, he's just, you know, his, his emergence this season, it, you know, we've, we've seen it coming. He's been playing for a while, and his emergence this season is, has been great for the Cardinals because he's a leader on the court, and he can, and he can light it up. 18.8 per game, yep. 4.9 boards. Stahir under three assists and a little better than two and a half steals per game. And he's able to convert the three-point play. That so quick. Six points for yeah. Jackson Young. Again, pressure defense. Good job by Freeman to get in the passing lane. At least got a hand on it. Well, we've talked about it a lot. The successes the Cardinal basketball program has seen under coach Mike Gregoric has been through its defense. Yes, absolutely. I mean, every... Every time I talk to a coach, says, well, what, what's the key? We got to figure out that one, three, one. Well, and they're playing a lot of man. They are not right uh, now. And, and that's what we saw in those first couple yep. of games of the season. Webster is fouled. We'll go to the line to shoot two. Gary Freeman called for the foul. here tonight. Yeah. 
Second one is hard off the back iron. Long rebound comes to Jordan. Jackson Young makes it across midcourt and travel. Jackson didn't think so, kind of gave the official a little bit of a look. Webster back to Kungu. Webster thought about it for a second. Into the corner, Vandrell underneath, and Webster able to lay it in. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, and Webster just able to work his way inside, and Vandrell get, got him the basketball. Bucket and the foul. And Jerry Freeman will have an opportunity for the three-point play. That's going to be number two against Vandrell. Yeah. I mean, team third. Trying to push it back to a 10 point lead. Rattles around and out. Webster down with the rebound. A steal, Belpedio tracks it down in the corner. Baseline drive comes up short. Rebound deflected. Caught up to by Jones. High pass, Freeman controls in the corner. Trying to work around Webster. They say he's bumped. Oh, no. They say he did the bumping? Yeah, he yeah. For, he did. I think he just kind of hooked him. He did. Parker Second foul for Freeman, yeah. and then he will make his way to the bench. Parker stole back in. You know, they're, they're counting on big things from Parker, and he's been dealing with injuries this season, but coach is uh, happy to have him back in the lineup. Spanier for three. Won't go. Stole a good rebound. Yeah, nice body. Nice way to body that uh, defender. Young's pass deflected. Spanier on the rush. Stole gets a piece of that pass and knocks it out of bounds. Spanier back up top. Down low, Webster lets the defense fly by, hits the short hook shot. Yeah, he's, he's got eight points to lead all scorers for the uh, Elk River squad. Including their last five in the game. Freeman up top and Walk. travel by Jordan. Elk River cuts this lead to seven, looking to see if they can continue to cut into it. Gungu ahead for Spanier. Cool, back to Spanier, back to Kungu in the corner. Tipped away, Jackson Young on the run. Drives to the lane, gets his own miss. Athletic save by Dunbar underneath. And quickly at the other end, Webster gets it back to Cool. Now Spanier to Webster in the corner. He drives baseline, kicks it up for Cool. Gets it back. Thought about the three, takes it down. Spanier will take it. That won't go. Rebound deflected, controlled by the Elks. Webster back in the corner. Yeah, Jordan. That be his first team fourth. Just about midway through this first quarter or first half. Logan Klein is going to check in for Elk River. Right, 
Spanier will kick it back up top. Webster and now Cool. Right side for Klein. Inside for Dunbar. Back out. Klein for three. That won't go. And a foul underneath. I think that's how Dunbar will leave. Will be Lou Dunbar on the foul. I want to give a big shout out to Steve Tarr, who's watching the game tonight from all the way out in California. Heard about uh, Joe Young, wanted yeah. to make sure that uh, he got a chance to listen to the, the dulcet tones of Mr. Young. Stoll driving, kicks it out. Belpedio for three, it's good. Yeah, puts it back up by 10. Webster in the left corner, back up top. Cool to Spanier, he'll put it on the floor and drive and score against Connor Jordan. Well, I mean, again, as this game continues to unfold, Elk River does not want a back and forth. Pass batted, stolen by Spanier, and saved into the chest of Dunbar. Cool will be calm as he brings it across <laughs> midcourt. High post, Dunbar hits a slashing Klein. His shot came up short. Cardinals had the rebound and batted away out of bounds. Well, Dunbar, unfortunately, he wasn't called for a foul. And kind of a little heavy contact underneath, but nothing called. There's head coach Ryan Cervati. His fifth season as the head man at Elk River's basketball, boys basketball program. Russ back into the ball game for the Cardinals. Give Connor Jordan a breather. 26-18, the Cardinal lead. Connor Jordan, or Connor. <laughs> I'll figure him out eventually. Yeah, eventually. Jackson Young gets it to Belpedio in the corner. Russ inside will score. Cool, ahead to Klein. Dunbar watched by Jones. Webster, turnaround jumper, won't fall. Rebound controlled by Young. Met on defense by Cool and Young able to draw the foul, gets in the line to shoot two. Hey, I want to give another shout out, Joe. Donnie Bright's watching the game all the way from Naples, Florida. Wish us a happy go. new year. Donnie, we wish you a happy new year as well. And Absolutely. thank you for letting us know. One of the greatest guys ever, in my mind, and a lot Certainly of people's mind. Certainly, the coach himself. Yes. Jackson Young able to hit the first. A dozen points already. We still got seven minutes to play in the first half. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully Don's getting some golf in down in Naples. Almost played golf in Coon Rapids. Yeah, you really right almost played, you played disc golf. I did. I know you did. On, on both sides of the New Year's. Oh. The PDO jumped the lane, got the save. Young gets the basket wow. at the other end. What a play by Belpedio. It just it got the, got the uh, steal and, and the assist. Young with 15. Dunbar underneath and puts it home. We've got uh, just a shade under seven minutes remaining and Jackson Young almost to his average. I mean, the athleticism of Anthony Belpino yeah, on I that love play to, to first come Look at that. flying up court. Yeah, just flip it to Young. Yeah. And, and get into the passing lane, but think, Keep himself in bounds, get control, and get it ahead to Young for the easy basket. Kind of, kind of reminds me of a young Dave Emmy, but really young. Jones can't get it to fall. The foul underneath is going to go against. There's uh, Dave Emmy. Ross, the best in the business. <laughs> Klein will get it back and get it ahead to Spanier. 
drives. Jones gets a little contact, but Spanier gets the basket. Young driving, lost it off his foot, out of bounds. I think he, I think he was uh, his attempt was trying to put it off uh, Webster. Raymond Bennett will check in for the Cardinals. Kungu across midcourt, high post, Dunbar, Klein. Can't get the reverse to fall. Battling for the rebound is Bennett. He comes away with it. Into the front court, Ross into the corner for Jones. Kenny Jones with the high arcing three-pointer. Coach O had talked about Kenny and, and how well he's been doing this year, and it's obviously his sixth man off the bench. And a nice three-pointer for him for his first points of the game. Russ got a finger on the ball, but went right to Webster. Webster gets it back to Kungu. Timeout of River. 5.29 to go first half. Coon Rapids has led for the most part the entire half since taking the lead last at 8-6. Yeah, they, they've definitely, uh, there's still plenty of time obviously left in this first half, but uh, they've they've been able to control this one just so far. And they're just playing their game. They're, they're getting down quick on transition. They're hitting their open shots. They're, they've been pretty successful from beyond the arc. And, you know, and, and again, playing solid defense. The Cardinals have had, we talked about it, you know, a team first team. Absolutely. And, you know, Belpedio's effort on the steal and, and give the young great example of that. But it, we've also talked about depth of scoring. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six three pointers from four or five different guys. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal. I mean, you, you want, that's what you want. You want well balanced scoring and solid defense. Cool into the corner, Dunbar's pass, knocked away out of bounds by Bennett, shot clock down to four. Into the backcourt, Kungu. Back to Cool, just fires it up, it's nowhere near, up and over out of play, and shot clock violation Thanks, the first one we've seen in the, in the in our third game. Thanks, first one we've seen. Would have been out of bounds. Yeah. It if would've. it weren't. Yeah. But yeah, it, that's when it especially comes into play when you've had a timeout, a broken offensive play, oh. and a huge three pointer again for Kenny Jones. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, found his spot, he's found his comfortable spot on the court on that uh, far wing. Cool wants to answer at the other end and does. Well, they, they need those answers if they want to stay in this game. Young pull-up jumper is way short. Dunbar hands it off to Kungu and he will work up court. And you won't see that uh, that kind of miss from Jackson Young very often. Kungu gets between the double team, gets it to Cool in the corner. Spanier thought about the three, drives instead, comes up empty. Russ with the rebound, Young ahead for Belpedio, tipped away at the last second by Kungu. That'd be a good name for his podcast, Cool in the Corner. Cool in the Corner. Cool in, you got Cool in the Corner.
Hetward inbound underneath the Elks basket, a 38-25 lead, 4.14 to go first half. Inbound to counter Jordan, quickly up and in off the glass. Yeah, and again, just realizing you've got that, uh, that height underneath, get it to him for an easy bucket. Webster hands it back to Congo. His pass was tipped, but got through to Spanier. Again, pressure defense from the Cardinals, and there's the steal for Hatward. Drives against Kungu. Shot wouldn't fall. Saved by Jones. And Young did not quite tip to toe along the sideline. Yeah, nice, a nice move by Kenny Jones to, to save that basketball, but unfortunately that one was headed uh, for the sideline. Not sure how, how Hatward didn't get it. <laughs> a foul yeah, on, I, the, I don't on the initial I don't drive. Either. But I guess if the defensive player was continually moving backwards, but he was in the air. So again, pressure pays off as it forces the Elk River Tate turnover. 15 point lead, an opportunity for Coon Rapids to really turn the screws a bit here at the end of the first half. Jordan hands off to Raymond Bennett. Bennett back to the left side, out for Jones. Hands off, Hatworth thought about it, will take the three after all, it won't go. Spanier has the rebound. Kungu to Webster in the corner, back to Kungu. Drive, down low for Dunbar. Up river again. Passing it to an open look for Cool. Oh, he will oh. get three from the free throw line. Again, Contact yeah. from Jackson Young. Yeah. That'll be his first. Team sixth. Amani Cool, a late add to the starting lineup for Elk River. T.J. Cowett, one of their leading scorers. Yep. Yeah, not that, able to go tonight. Well, that happened uh, sometime during the day because I spoke with uh, Coach Cervati this morning, and that's the lineup he gave me with Lynn in it. He has not made an appearance, to my knowledge. No, I've not seen him. Logan Klein back on the floor for Elk River. Cool, missed them both. The rebound by Bennett. Lost the handle, but were able to recover for the home team. Quick shot by Bennett, won't fall. Spanier the rebound, Cool. We'll get it back to him as they come across midcourt. Spanier back to Cool in the corner. Vandrell for three. It's not going to go. Bennett has the long rebound, and he flies up court with numbers. Young in the corner. Waits, takes a look. Three-pointer is short. Rebound tipped out of bounds, and I don't know well, I don't how. Know. That, I, don't, I, how I don't know how. That was clearly <laughs> off of Kungu. How, how, did, how did none of the officials I, I don't. That I don't know. I, that, that's crazy. That is, see it again. that is the most obvious. Oh my, look, look at that. That's just a oh horrible Oh my call. Lanta. Oh my Lanta. <laughs> Kungu has it. He, he knew it was off him. Yeah. He said, okay, we'll take oh, it. We'll take, hey, thanks for the gift. Absolutely. You know, it's the holiday season. Giving season continues. <laughs> Van Drell inside, leans on in on Jordan. Shot wouldn't go. Rebound out of bounds. We'll stay with Elk River. Spanier runs into some traffic in the corner, kicks it out, Klein's shot, rattles around and down. Young will get the reach in on Kungu. 
It's his first team six. Both teams with six. So free throw is from here on out, but only you know, 102 seconds to go in the first half. Coach O mentioned Joel Kongu and what a defender that he is. He's really solid. He's going to be all over you all game long. That time he's a little bit, uh, a little bit too much contact. Jackson Young looking for room at the top of the key against Kungu. Hands it off for Stoll. Now Kenny Jones. Young, long three from the left wing. That won't go. Spanier the rebound and Kungu. We'll move it up court for Webster in the corner. Cool back to Webster. Again, Elk River likes to work in the half court. That one won't fall for Kungu. The rebound tied up. Possession arrow will keep Everything it in else. Elk River yep. possession. Drive won't fall for Spanier or for uh, Kungu again. Stoll to the corner. Hatworth for three. That's not going to go. Poole has the rebound under a minute to go in the first half. Kungu the, backs away from the double team. Yeah, pressure defense. Any travel. Hetworth running to his right, backs off against Kungu, drops it underneath. Jordan spins back to his left and scores. Yeah, nice job using his body to spin away and, and being able to create a little space. He has four. The last four for Coon Rapids. Oh, steal for Kenny Jones in alone. He drops it home. Kungu drives, fires it up, but won't fall. And uh, the Cardinals are going to go to the locker room up 17. Yeah, an impressive first half for Coon Rapids. I mean, I thought they played pretty well. They were, uh, they cooled down a little bit from beyond the arc as, the, as that first half wound down. But nonetheless, I thought they did a really nice job of controlling it on both sides of the court. Yeah, fun first half of basketball to watch would be a part of, especially if you're on the home team side, as is our Lexi Schweiner. She's down with Coach O. Go, Lexi. Hey, Coach O, you spoke a lot about keeping the pace of play very fast. Seems like it's in your team's favor right now. What are you liking about that? Yeah, no, I like the pace of play. We know that they're, you know, they want to play a little more slow, deliberate. So mix in a couple things defensively um, for us. Uh, we've been able to do that and I think make them uncomfortable in stretches. But there's also been moments in the things that we do that they found some easy looks too. So it's like, how do we mix what we're doing but clean up the things that we do? We've struggled a bit when we've gone from one thing to another and we got, we got to tidy that up some. For sure. And you've also capitalized on some steals and turnovers. We just saw Kenny there at the end capitalize on that. What else are you liking from your team? I think we're moving the ball pretty well. I mean, we had some early shots where we created some good looks for us early with the ball movement. I think as the half got on, we got a little stale with that and settled for some shots. The ball movement's good. And, yeah, defensively, when we're executing what we need to do, like, we're able to create those turnovers. And we like that. We like easy offense off our D. And so, and like I said, tidying up those things and um, just get back to moving that ball pretty good. I think we'll, we'll be all right. Awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. All right. We will send it to break and be back with more at halftime after this. Okay, I have a couple good ones for you, Joe. How do football players stay cool? By standing next to the fans. <laughs> what kind of tea do football players drink? Penalty. Why can't you play football with pigs? 
because they hog the ball. Uh. Did you know major recreational equipment like RVs, campers, converted buses, and boats are allowed on residential property in Coon Rapids? But you are limited to two items that must be registered and operable. And any vehicle parked at a home for more than 12 hours must not exceed a certain size. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to CoonRapidsMN.gov. Back at the Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse with some of the best hats you'll see. Oh, I love that. Love it. On TV, to be certain. <laughs> and we've got a good ball game so far for the home team, especially spreading it out and knocking it down. Seven three-pointers in the first half from five different players. It started with Freeman, uh, Hetwer, and Young all hitting early on in the first couple of minutes. And they, they, the great thing is how much they've spread the ball out. And they've been able to spread the lead down the stretch, most importantly, behind a, a 15 point first half effort for uh, Jackson Young. Eight points off the bench for Kenny Jones. Uh, Freeman's got seven. So everybody contributing. And we saw, we talked about it repeatedly. Anthony Belpedio, the, the, the play of the game, uh, so far was the steal that set up a breakaway basket for Jackson Young. Yeah, you know, and Coach O talks about his depth, and you saw it there in that first half with the with the number of different players scoring. So this is an opportunity for Coach to, to see a number of different players. He's got a nice lead. He did mention he's, there are a few things that he did not like about that first half. They did, uh, Elk River did figure a few things out and get some open looks, but he has to be obviously pleased with a 44-27 lead at the break. Well, we hope to get a word from Elk River coach Ryan Servati before we get the second half started. That's on the other side of a break on CTL.
playing Elk River here with Coach Cervati right now. What adjustments did you tell your team to make in the locker room? Yeah, I mean, we got to handle the pressure and stop turning the ball over for layups. Um, we have to find a middle guy in the flash against their zone, and we have to attack it a bit better underneath. So. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. All right, I'll send it back to you guys. Thank you, Lexi. And it's, a, it's not an insurmountable no. lead, but Elk River certainly need. I mean, not giving up the, the easy layups is, is key, but they, they clearly struggled with the pressure of the defense. They, they did. And, you know, you know the Cardinals have come out and, and continue giving them the same kind of pressure. So, obviously, the, uh, the Elks want to clean a few things up, Joe, but, but I think uh, you'll see continued pressure, if not more pressure from Coon Rapids, force some turnovers, get some transition buckets, and we'll see what happens as the second half plays out. When Jerry Freeman, most of his seven points, I think, came very early yep. in that first half. And both he and Jackson Young averaging, coming into the game, between 18 and 19 points a game. It, to be technical, it's 18.3 for Freeman and 18.8 .8 for Jackson Young. But uh, both very capable of blowing up and, okay. and going well beyond that. that. That is for sure. And if they can get both going in the same contest, that's long three for Jackson Young. Comes up just short. Spanier has the long rebound. You know, I, I, don't, I don't mind that shot. I like that selection because he can hit it from there, and he had plenty of uh, opportunity. He just hit it uh, off the front of the iron. Webster kicks it up top. Elk River. Into the post for Van Dre. Blocked by oh. Kenny Jones. Great defensive play. Yeah, Kenny getting the start here in the second half. Freeman sees the lane, takes it, and scores. Yeah, that, that was nice. And Jerry just cuts through a couple of defenders. And just a little bit, a little adjustment allows him to get the better look at the basket. Well, they just left him a wide open they lane. They were expecting him to pass. And Took it right to the hole. Spanier spinning jump shot won't fall. Jones with the rebound underneath. Freeman to the left side of the lane. We'll put it up through traffic and come up empty. Van Dre has the rebound. Mandrell back up top for Cool. Watched by Freeman. Elk River again, patiently passing the perimeter. Webster working against Connor Jordan, trying to get it underneath Vandrell. Had it stripped away by Young. Yeah. And he got kind of caught up. What he originally wanted to do was push it down court, but what? that pass taken away and well, he had, forced he, to travel. He had that opportunity too. Again, it just, uh, it just came off his hand funny. Kungo across midcourt for Spanier right side. To the lane underneath Vandrell all alone. Nice. will drop it home. You got a nice play there. They set him up alone at the back door. Freeman works left side of the lane. Back door for Connor Jordan. And he drops it home. Looked familiar. Yes. And for Elk River, obviously can't afford to trade baskets with the Cardinals. And no, they need stops on Spanier defense. Finds room for the jump shot, but it won't go. Oh and Jones ensures it's a one and done. Three nice, nice rebounds for Kenny underneath. Young drives, comes up empty. Thought he was fouled, won't get the call. Spaniards pass too tall for Vandrell, but a three-pointer way off the mark for Kungu. That were cross court for Young. And I was gonna say, you know, they, they wanna play that slower half court game, but at some point you have to push the tempo down 20. Yeah. And you have to be able to come up with stops. Vandrell with the steal this time. Oh yeah, that time they did come up with a stop. Now you have to come back on the offensive end and convert buckets. 
especially when you're down by what they're down by. Span, you're able to regather it after the pass from Van Drell was tipped. Spanier spins, shoots, comes up empty, and that were on the run. Yeah, he had he was forced to put a little too much on that. Jones a three from the corner. It's the front of the rim and rebound uncontested for Cool. Webster's pass deflected but got through. Tungu can't make the play. And Rebound off of Kungu out of bounds. And timeout. Cardinals called the timeout. Up by 19. Still early in this first half oh yeah, or second half. Plenty of time. And while we have timeout on the floor, we'll go down on the floor for Lexi Schweiner. Lexi. Hey guys, great to be back into this broadcast. Wanted to give a little bit of an injury update about Parker Stoll, who we've seen a little bit in this game. He had those ankle issues at the beginning of the season. He did play in half of a game and then got hurt again. Now he's back. He practiced this week for the first time since that injury. And Coach O says that it's so good to have him back. He just needs to kind of acclimate himself again and get that confidence in his ability back. Also for Tegan Plowman Tate, they are going to find out Friday, that's tomorrow, about his broken, broken collarbone and where they sit with that, guys. Be very nice to have uh, Plum and Tate back before playoffs, oh, if at all possible. It would be and fantastic. Of course, you, you got to get him not only healthy, but back up to game speed and, and make sure he's able to. Yeah, but he is such a good shooter oh. and, and adds length to their defense. Oh, and a as rebounder, well. he's a stellar rebounder. They're going to call that. Uh, this is a foul on Connor Jordan. That's his second, team first. Well, and to expand a little bit on what Lexi said and, and for Parker Stoll, uh, you know, he, they said they were going to ease him back in the action here tonight. And it just kind of, as, as she said, get him acclimated to game play again. And nice steal by Jones. Kenny's had a great start to this second half. Three pointer from Hetwer is short, but he gets his own rebound. Jones for three. That one won't go either. And the rebound by Spanier. Yeah, Coach O's fine with those shots because you know he knows that his guys can hit him. Kungu oh gets in the paint. Shot won't fall. Van Trell able to grab the rebound and put it back. Freeman trying to find some room. Gets it to counter Jordan in the low post. Spinning jump shot off the mark. Rebound by Webster. And this is what Althor was hoping for. Misses, quick misses, and just one opportunity down court for Coon Rapids. But again, they've got to make them make them pay for those misses. Webster wants three. We'll have to wait. Cardinals quickly in transition. Young down low. Denied by Webster. Rebound. Scooped up by Kungu. Yeah, again, great defensive play by Webster. Oh, it comes to Yund. Yund for the assist. Oh. <laughs> Good job, Joe. <laughs> Almost threw a little short. I thought, I thought you were going to hit someone down there. Uh, oh. <laughs> All the pressure was on. At least you didn't pull your hands. <laughs> Webster for three from that left wing again. Again, it's off the mark. Kenny Jones tracks down the rebound. Yeah, you talked about Kenny. Kenny's had a nice game. Uh, you know, not just scoring, but. Belpedio for three is good. That's a big three. Puts the lead to 20. Cool, back to Spanier. Spanier will take the three. It's not going to go. Young has the rebound. And call he's Webster. Fouled.
or they call it on uh, Klein. Yep, they call it on Klein. His first team, team's first. Jerry Freeman, cross midcourt for the Cardinals. Taking it right at Kungu, backs him into the lane. Pass back and... Oh, I, his, I, oh that's, I, a, that's a bad call. His, I, I didn't think that he, he his, went over the line He did all. not go, I was, I was watching his foot, he did not go over the line. Yeah. He's right there, he's, he's on the line. Yeah, I, I don't know how you call that. But I'm a homer, yeah. and I've been accused of it, and I'm, I'm proud of it. <laughs> Klein looking for someone to get it into. Finds Spanier. Spanier drives, leaves it off for Vandrell. Back out. Klein for three. That's not going to go. Dunbar has the rebound. Belpedio is going to be called for the reach in. That's his first, just the second team foul on the Cardinals. That one thrown for Jackson Young. Jackson Young. Yeah. To just field it and gifts. take it on the breakaway. There's, there's a gift. Here you go. Not the assist he was looking no, for. Now and turnover again. Dunbar lost the handle out of bounds. Timeout, Elk River. Yeah, that that this was not it. That was no. not how you draw it up. Jackson Young got a great jump on the ball and the easiest points he scored all night. He's got 17 of them to lead all scorers. His team up 53 to 31. Yeah, you'd, you'd like uh, you'd like. 10 players like uh, Jackson Young, just, uh, just a really good young man. I think Alexi has something for us. Yeah, guys, we talked a lot about how Elk River and Coon Rapids are very familiar with each other, but it's not just the teams that are familiar with each other, it's also the coaches. Coach O and Coach Cervate kind of had the same journey. Coach Cervate was an assistant at Elk River for years, and he also did eighth grade. And then before Coon Rapids, Coach O did the same thing at Blaine. So they've known each other for over a decade, very familiar, very familiar opponents and familiar with what each other do. Kind of sweet. Thank you, Larry. Very cool. Joe, have you ever stayed at the YMCA? I have not. <laughs> I, I've stayed at a YMCA camp. Oh, does well, that, that count? Yeah, you just add, add the word camp to it. YMCA camp. <laughs> Cardinals with a healthy 22-point lead here in the second half. Jerry Freeman looking for room on the baseline. Won't find it nice against looking Klein. For help. Fires it to Belpedio. The one-touch pass didn't get through. Kungu got in the way. Yeah, a good defense by Kungu. Is, and that's, uh, that's a turnover. Sports are riding not happy. When, when coach gets the, the ball on the, on the turnover, the you don't want to look at coach after you made that pass, but since the pass went right to him, you're forced to look at coach, so. Young for three, it's good. Now we just got a uh, got a text from uh, Coach Scott Stork. He's watching as well, and he said uh, a great broadcast. So I'll definitely send a check to you as soon as I get a chance. Vantrell driving the lane, but came hard off the rim. Played out off of Jackson Young. Both both teams stating their case that. 
Last touched by their opposition. Klein inbounds to Kungu. He steps up, back to Klein in the corner underneath. Dunbar oh. is fouled by Freeman. That's going to be his third. Yeah, I mean, I like the thought too by, by Freeman. Jerry Freeman just did a really nice job of stepping in, but unfortunately got a little bit of a little bit of the body. Dunbar able to hit the first. And he hits them both. Scoring definitely a lot slower here through the first part of the second right. half than we saw certainly at the start of the game and really at any point in that first half. Stoll into the lane, that shot well off the mark. Dunbar has the rebound. Kongu's pass deflected, oh. another great play defensively by Belpedio. a selfish play. Three-pointer for Jones, nothing but net. Unfortunately, it was on the outside yeah. of the rim. Wrong side of the net. Spanier <laughs> kicks it out. And Stoll's going to be called for the foul. Just the fourth against the Cardinals yep. as we reach the midway point of the second half. Just one against Elk River here in the second. Well, there wasn't a lot of fouls, in the, a ton of fouls in the first half either. <laughs> Officials conferring. Okay, I guess we're ready to go. Got it figured out. Call stole again. No, I just oh, out of bounds. Oh, I thought they called him for the bump. Okay, that's good. Spaniard gets it to Dunbar right side, back to Spaniard. Cardinal defense swarming. Cool and Spanier playing catch, and that one too tall on the return. Another turnover by Elk River. Yeah, too many turnovers, I know, for Coach Cervati's liking. Vandrell picking up his third. Belpedio will go to line and shoot two. And he'll hit the first one clean. That one won't go. Connor Jordan tracking down the rebound, but he's going to be called for the yeah, hold. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely held. That's his third. <laughs> Team fifth. Just fighting for a position. Hey, just hustling. Spanier gets a pick from Van Trell, ran into Stoll. Threw it up way line. too yeah. high for Sheldon along the baseline. Another turnover by Elk River. Young, left side. 
Kicks it back for Stoll. Belpedio in the corner for three. It's wow. good. He's got ten. Yeah, he's, I was going to say, he's got ten off the bench. Spanier everywhere he looks, he finds a double team. Jordan with the steal, Jones with the dunk. Now oh, and Kenny's got 10, another timeout called by Elk River. 62-33 lead for Coon Rapids and the home fans are enjoying this one here tonight. You see Jordan with the steal and Kenny with the bucket. Not the cleanest flush I've no, seen, but I was going to call it the flush, but a I lot wasn't really closer, sure. A lot closer than I could get. Well, you, you, you need you and I both would need a ladder in order to or flush a trampoline. It. A trampoline would be. I'd like to see that. Small too. trampoline. Yeah, I, you get, we can get her done. Get her done. Maybe a big trampoline. Maybe a ladder. Maybe an escalator. Just like right yes. to the top. <laughs> an escalator would get work. <laughs> uh. Coach Cervati's team now looking at a deficit that is nearly insurmountable, yep. especially when you're a team that averages less than 50 points a game. Yeah, their game plan was to keep this a low-scoring game, and, and you know, granted, it's not the 90 points that that the Cardinals score usually in a win this year, but there's still eight minutes left. But nonetheless, uh, they're being outplayed. Well, coming in, the difference was pretty huge. Elk River only scoring 55 points per game to Coon Rapids is 78. Yep. But they only give up 62 points per game. Right. Cardinals defensively have given up more at 79.8 per game. And I know that is a, a statistic Coach O would love to see change before the end of this season. Yes, absolutely. Get that back into you know, it, giving up 33 is, is is much better than 80 points per game. Exactly. You're just not going to win a lot of basketball games if you give up 80 a game. No. Unless you're scoring 90 a game. But you're not going to score 90 every game. So you, you definitely want to work on defense and keeping that score down when you can. But a lot of, lot of good things here tonight for the Cardinals so far. Vandrell misses the first, 7.45 to go. Cardinals threatening to, to push it uh, to running time, perhaps. If they can get on another run. A little pressure defense applied by Elk River. Inbound goes to Young. Jordan to Stoll in the front court. Gets it back to Jordan. Jones in the lane, the bucket, and the foul on Spanier. Yeah, again, good, good body control by Kenny Jones, able to get the bucket. That three-point opportunity will bring him. And again, almost trapped there. Stoll able to get it over to Jordan, and he does a nice job of finding Kenny Jones, and Kenny gets the bucket. Jones able to hit the extra. Yeah, and Kenny with 13 so far on the night. Spanier wanted the three, put it on the floor instead. Kungu kicks it out. Cool for three. That won't go. Jones has the rebound. Bennett on the run. Will take it straight to the rim for the basket. Those are, that's Bennett's first bucket of the game. 67-34 lead for Coon Rapids. Dunbar in the corner, fights through the pressure from Young and forces Young to take the foul, his second. Be a one and one opportunity for 
Lou Dunbar. Another look at Bennett's basket. Dunbar misses the front end of the one and one. Counter Jordan the rebound. Young ahead for Freeman. Back to Young, and now Freeman on the left side. Drives to the paint, lost the handle, but right to Jordan. Nice job to split the defenders and put it home. Yeah, it really, really is. Really was, I should say. Yeah, he did a really good job just using his muscle underneath. And, and that pushes it to a 35-point lead. And the clock will run. Gavin DeVries will check in for Coon Rapids. Jackson Young, 20 points on the night, heads to the bench. He had 15 in that first half. Cool hits the first, earns the second. Hits them both. Joel Kungu called for the infraction, his second. Jackson. Kenny Jones out gets a nice applause from the crowd and a very enthusiastic hand slap from Coach O. Well, everything turning up roses for the home team. They're going to improve to six and three on the year. Long three for DeVries won't fall. Good effort for Bennett along the end line. Didn't even run down any cheerleader. But uh, yeah, running time in your favor on your home court always feels good. Yes. Especially when you're improving to six and three and picking up a conference win. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you got to look at this game. The Cardinals uh, controlled the action. From Connor start to Jordan finish. jumping the passing lane, gets the steal, lays it up and in. And it's good to see the Cardinals continuing to hustle, especially on the defensive end, knowing that they have the game in the bag. would be so easy for them to, to just kind of take it as they go. And Mandrell misses the free throw, rebound out of bounds off of Elk River, it'll be Cardinal Ball. Yeah, a, a nice a nice win for Coon Rapids, Joe, here this evening. And, and you know, it's just the way they control the action. DeVries will take another three, and again, it comes up short. Rebound by Klein. Kungu back to the other end, runs into traffic, throws it to DeVries. Hatworth spins to the lane, drops it in. Hatworth with five. It's his first point since that very yep. early three-pointer. Vandrell forced it up, missed. Badly to one side. Freeman gets it back to DeVries into the front court. Pass was deflected and went right to Jackson Hetworth. That's when you know your night's going well. Right. It's out of the reach of your post player yeah. and it goes right to the corner instead and that'll be a backcourt violation. Connor Young checking in. I love it my favorite player on I, the squad. I, I'm just gonna, I was just, just going to say that. 
not just due to his stature, but also being the younger sibling. Oh, yeah. They're always, they're a always lot, the lot better of, athletes. A lot of stories there. Kungu working against Young. Forces him to the lane. The shot won't fall. Dunbar, the rebound, will get fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. And that'll pretty much take the rest of the time off the clock. Yeah, just 12 points in this second half for the Elk River Elks. Make it 13, but that's uh, that's not going to get you a lot of wins. No, it will definitely will not. And for the Cardinals, probably not the the second half they they wanted to see. They, I would think, wanted to see more of the up tempo basketball. Oh, yeah. They played in the first. I thought they played a cleaner uh, game in that first half. Uh, and really, when they were pushing the tempo and playing their game, but uh, able to you know, continue to stretch the lead and defensively, definitely played the way they want to play in that second half. Oh yeah, again, they, only allowing 13 points. That, that's that's uh, that's impressive. I mean, defensively, they've played well all game long. You know, offensive has been going in spurts, but you know, enough to score 73 points tonight. A nice win for the Cardinals, Joe, as you mentioned, moving to six and three on the season. Yeah, a very low scoring second half. The Cardinals scored just 29 points, or 39 points to their 44 right. in the first. But just just off of their average. But uh, yeah, holding Elk River to just 15 points and, and walking out of here with a running time win. Yeah, and, and that's great. Anytime you can uh, you can get that kind of win conference opponent, uh, you certainly will take it. And, and that's a, a nice one for the Cardinals. And not quite midway through their, their schedule, but you know they were they were coming off a nice stretch. They were three and one on their recent road trip. Won their their last game against Chisago, 93-82 last Thursday. So now back to back wins here, and that means if my math's correct, they've won four of the last yep. five contests. Yep, exactly. And uh, a big one, another big one coming up, though, isn't it? Maple Grove on it, the road. It is Maple next, Grove. No, Maple Grove's only four and five. Contest. They're four and five. So, you know, they're, they're an opportunity for the Cardinals to see if they can get a road win against the Crimson. That would be a big one. And, not, again, just not just because of them being a conference opponent, but how long it's been since the Cardinals beat the, the Crimson and, and the nostalgia there, the, and of course the, uh, you know, knocking him off a little bit. Yep. But uh, with down on the floor with a couple of the stars of tonight's game, Lexi. Hey guys, coach. First of all, congratulations on the win. I have to ask who's with you right now. These are my creatures. It's my daughter <laughs> Neva, son Caleb. Hey guys, anything to say about the win? Uh, it was good. Good. Proud of your dad. I love it. So much depth in scoring tonight, Coach. Players coming off the bench, getting some points. What did you like about the, your guys' ability to work as a team? I think we do a great job of that this year, so I'm happy that it showed today. Um, you know, we had a stretch where the ball wasn't moving as much, and we just had to sort of, hey, call that time out and say, hey, let's move it, and good things happen. It's a lot more fun style of ball, and we just totally got back to moving it. And the fun thing about this group is, like, you never quite know one night to the next, right? Like, I, I think I mentioned to you earlier, like, one night it's going to be a Kenny Jones is going to give us huge minutes. The other night it's going to be a Ray Bennett. The other night it's a Jackson Hetwer. You know, this guy, I think, maybe not even double-digit points, but this guy's a rock for us, man, always making things happen. So it's a really fun team that really buys in right now, and, Part of our success is the culture that they've built. And I know we talked about how much of a rivalry this is for you guys. You know Coach Cervate well. How much sweeter does that make this win? 
oh, you know, it's, it's always good. You know, I, I got him for now. And, you know, I know that, you know, he's been doing this for a long time and, and, and he's going he's gonna to get one on me someday, but not today. And that's what mattered the most. <laughs> so. I love it. You can rub it in a bit. Thank you so much, Coach. Yeah, thank you. All right, Jerry, and for you, you started the season with some ankle issues. What motivated you to get healthy and to this point again? You know, I seen I seen a lot of my guys having fun out there. You know, you know, we had a first a terrible loss to game, so you know I had to get well, did what I had to do to recover, and you know I came back. And you're such a playmaker for this team. How do you push them and kind of lead this team to this win tonight? You know, I've always been a playmaker ever since I've been playing basketball. I just love dishing it to my guys, seeing them make the basket. I just like making it easier for my team. Love that. Thank you so much, Sherry, and congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, I will send it back up to you in the booth for some post-game highlights. Thank you, Lexi. And, you know, after having seen the, the team in their first two games, which they started the season back-to-back -back here, and they – you know, as Jerry mentioned, kind of an ugly loss to Apple Valley right. in the in the opener, uh, and then bounce back with a win in Game Two. Uh, but you know, to reach this point, we haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. Uh, they were impressive tonight. I thought they, so. And they, especially what we've talked about all night long, the depth they showed, uh, and the the team first. You know, making those plays for the team. I think Anthony Belpedio, we talked about him ad nauseum a bit, maybe. <laughs> Wait, did he have two points in the game? I, I think he may have scored he might, a, a yeah, couple but he, of baskets. But, but we but, talked about him all the time because he made a, he made effort elsewhere. Those, those plays away from the ball. And then, you know, Kenny Jones comes in as 13 off the bench. But what it was what he wasn't – what he – doing away from the scoreboard that was might be most impressive early in that second half, getting rebounds on the defensive end, limiting Elk River to one shot, uh, making plays defensively and, and getting it up court. Uh, and it, it just a just a great team effort and, and a good victory and a, and a nice way to start the season out to a six and three start. Oh, no doubt about that. And defensive, you talked about defensively. I thought they played stellar pr pretty much throughout that game. You anytime you hold a team to 42 points. Now, granted, Elk River is not a scoring machine, but it's definitely below their average. And, and so anytime you hold a team to 42 points, you've done well on the defensive end. Here's a look at what we have coming up on CTN Girls Hockey, the home half of a home and home series, actually at Blaine tonight. Yes. And then uh, they will have uh, the 3 o'clock slot on Saturday afternoon. Howie Shapiro will be joining me yes. for that one. And then uh, the 7 o'clock night game will be the boys against Centennial. And for that one, I will be joined by Jerry Grant. Yeah, it's, below, it's past my bedtime at 7 o'clock. But, yeah, that's uh, – you know, Jerry and I have been splitting up those, uh, those single camera shoots. And so it will be a lot of fun, Joe. Then on Wednesday next week, we're back here at the Fieldhouse as the girls basketball team hosts the Maple Grove Crimson. But that's going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. Again, the final score, Coon Rapids 73, Elk River 42. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Lexi Schweiner and Howie Shapiro, I'm Joe Young. Say goodnight.